The United Democratic Movement says it will not be participating in the motion of no confidence against President Cyril Ramaphosa tomorrow. The motion was tabled by the African Transformation Movement and the DA believes it is frivolous. And I'm joined now by UDM Deputy President Ngabayom Zinkwankwa to get more sense of how the party views this motion. Ngabayomzi, good evening and thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight. First and foremost, is this motion happening? And I see the ATM saying they are going to the Western Cape High Court uh, tomorrow. Last night, speaking to the uh, head of policy, Mzonele Maini, he said, well, it's secret ballot or nothing. Yes. Well, I think it's important. Remember, this matter was canvassed extensively by the UDM and other parties that joined us in the Constitutional Court application in 2017, where the Constitutional Court ruled in our favor and to some extent compelled the Speaker to reconsider a decision at the time when she did not want to grant us a secret ballot. Uh, you'll recall that a criteria was given to say they had to consider a number of factors in order to, to grant a secret ballot, issues like people being able to vote with their conscience, uh, issues of personal safety for MPs, and that they must be able to, to exercise their democratic right in an environment where uh, there would be no harm and all of those issues that had to be considered. We said that as the United Democratic Movement, it would be possible for us after having achieved uh, that victory in 2017 to, to participate in a vote of no confidence or a motion of no confidence against the president of the country uh, in an open ballot. It, it would mean that uh, everything that we fought for in 2017 was in vain. We would like a situation where if the, 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 the motion of no confidence were to be debated in parliament and voted on, that a secret ballot is actually followed in line with what was done in the past. Because in our view, we did not, we were not fighting. Yes, we wanted to remove President Zuma because of what he represented. But the issue for us was about the principle and not about the man. We wanted to be able to use a secret ballot in future in cases like this, where parties bring motions of no confidence before the House to consider it. So for us, we have not even looked at the substance of the motion because firstly, we had to consider procedural issues to say, is, the, is, 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 uh, is what the speaker doing right? And we felt that it is wrong. And the next step was to be going to, was to take it to the next level where we look at substantive issues as whether or not we agree with the motion of no confidence and whether or not we're going to support it. So we're not there yet. We're still dealing with procedural issues. Well, looking at the prevailing circumstances uh, within the National Assembly, uh, uh, the Speaker of uh, the uh, National, or rather the, the, the Speaker of, of Parliament, Mulopo Mutapo, uh, saying, well, the, the Speaker believes that the environment is, is, is not one that is threatening to that point where uh, it warrants a, a secret ballot. What's the view of the UDM? Well, it's difficult to actually uh, respond to that when the Speaker has conducted no assessment of that environment in our view. You will recall that at the time when the decision to grant a secret ballot was made, an assessment was conducted by parliament. And after that assessment was done, then the, the speaker of the National Assembly at the time, former Speaker Balekambete, had to hold a briefing with the party leaders uh, to take them into their confidence about the circumstances she had considered before deciding to make that call, whether it was going to be secret or open ballot. None of that has happened in this instance. It's almost like the speaker is actually not leading anyone in parliament. In actual fact, in this context, the speaker has abused the powers. Uh, there should have been a consultation with party leaders to say, here are the factors and the reasons that I've considered before I arrived at that decision. We mustn't undermine motions because they come from certain political parties. There's a t at times, there's a tendency there in parliament to undermine motions that come from smaller parties looking at the size of the parties instead of the fact that those parties, how, how, no matter how small they are or big they are, they represent South Africans and they represent a constituency and that must be respected. And they are within their right to move a motion of no confidence in the, in the president if they so wish. What about the constitution that enjoins the National Assembly to conduct its business in a manner that is uh, transparent and open? 
Yeah, that's a counter argument to what we're saying. There's, it doesn't mean that the whole situation is not going to be transparent because we're doing a, a secret ballot, but it's also about ensuring that you protect the right of those MPs to exercise their right to vote in a particular in a particular manner, in secret, the same way that no one has ever voted, has never voted publicly during elections, even though sometimes you can declare your vote publicly before you cast it. But the issue here is that it's it's a political environment, it's a political terrain. There are a lot of factors and dynamics to consider before you make any particular decision. At the same time, what you want in a vote of no confidence, you want a situation where MPs of the ruling party that wish to vote uh, against President Cyril Ramaphosa are free to do so without uh, without uh, undue hindrance. So these are things that we must consider that in a politically contested environment where there are the differences, where there are a number of dynamics that even those, there might, there might be a minority at this point in time that want to vote against President Ramaphosa must be able to do so in secret if they want to do so. What are the concerns of ATM that uh, uh, already there's been reports of some members of uh, uh, the National Assembly having received money from the CR17 uh, campaign. I mean, are those fears legitimate and justified to say, well, I mean, uh, already there are people who have been paid here and probably there are more, uh, and therefore we need to do this in secret because uh, those people are, are fearing, I suppose, for their livelihoods. Well, well, uh, if, if those, look, we, we are not aware of that information. We've had ATM making those allegations. It would be for the ATM to prove those allegations at some point, I'm sure, in a forum that will be created, I'm sure, by the Executive Authority of Parliament to discuss these issues. But from where we're sitting, it's a matter of principle. People should be able to exercise, to vote to their conscience without undue hindrance. And that is what we want. That's what we fought for in 2017. And that's what we continue to fought, fight for in instances where motions of no confidence are tabled in parliament. I mean, uh, we paved the way for everyone to be able to use a secret ballot. There's no reason why in an instance such as this one, where you're dealing with the head of state, that if a party that has tabled the motion requests for a secret ballot, that they should not be granted one. In an instance where such a, uh, for example, such a request is not acceded to, uh, there should be a proper process of consultation where the speaker tries to take everyone into confidence so that uh, there's a cross-pollination of ideas across the political tables and across the political spectrum about how to take the process forward. It's not a matter of the speaker just deciding on her own that today I don't feel like granting you because it's going to be a problem in future if the speaker can depend, it will depend on her mood and her own individual assessment, subjective as it is, to say, I don't feel like uh, granting you a secret ballot today or I don't feel like granting you an open ballot today. Uh, it would undermine the, the victory we've achieved in 2017 and what we sought to, to achieve in trying to influence the, the voting patterns ensuring that uh, rather protecting the rights of MPs to be able to, uh, to vote with their conscience in Parliament. Now, the opposition party has called this motion frivolous, saying, well, uh, it, 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 it will not support it because it is a frivolous motion. In fact, uh, earlier on, they even went as far as to say uh, it's just a tool being used in the internal machinations within uh, the ANC, used by a particular faction in the ANC. All those, of course, are claims that have not uh, been proven, have got no, 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 no evidence at this particular point. But what is your view on the motion? No, no, no. Remember we said we, when the democratic lands look, I think it would be fair for the ATM to respond directly to that criticism, uh, criticism against this motion from the democratic lines. It's not the UDEM's place to enter into that, into that terrain. But what I want to say is that when the democratic lines tabled many motions of no confidence against President Zuma, we respected them. And that's exactly how we are going to approach the motion of no confidence, which has been tabled by ATM as a sister opposition party. Uh, because we expect them to do the same thing in future when should we decide to table a motion of no confidence against President Ramaphosa. Remember, they are also within their democratic right to do so. A uh, party that's represented in parliament and they are calling for a motion of no confidence to be debated in President Cyril Ramaphosa in terms of the rules and the constitution of the republic. So what could be wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Your unwillingness to participate in, in this is just purely based on this fact of a, of a secret ballot. Uh, do you think uh, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa certainly should be held to account for his performance so far uh, in this administration and particularly his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic? No, of course, of course. It's all opportunities like this are 
Um, moments like, that, like this, rather, always present uh, parties with an important opportunity to hold the president to account. But remember, you do not only hold the president to account via motion of no confidence. We always hold the president to account when he comes periodically to parliament to answer questions. We write questions to the president. We write letters to the president expecting him to account on a number of issues. We also hold the president to account after he delivers his sonar and then we debate his sonar. It is expected to respond to us in parliament and, and to deal with each and every issue that has been raised by political parties. So there are a number of mechanisms. The motion of no confidence even though it is a, it is a punitive one, uh, maybe less punitive than an impeachment, which is section 89 of the constitution, but it's another mechanism. It's one of the many tools that are available to members of parliament to hold in particular the president to account. So we'll continue to use other opportunities uh, that are going to come our way uh, to hold the president to account. But certainly do you think, I mean, the more direct question, it is time for South Africa to be freed from the leadership of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa? Well, we have not. Remember, I said to you, we only dealt with the procedural issues around this matter, and we felt like we did not agree in principle with the fact that the secret ballot was not uh, was not granted by the speaker. Uh, the next step, obviously, after that would have been for the party to consider the more substantive issue around the leadership of President Ramaphosa. The president, the party has not pronounced on that issue. I'm not going to do that uh, in a t TV interview. I would... I would uh, uh, I would be sanctioned heavily by the political party because remember there are structures and processes that you follow in parties before you arrive at such decisions. All right, Nobe uh, Mzikwanko, I appreciate your time, Deputy President of the UDM, and thank you for joining us tonight.